I had an interesting conversation today with um, a friend, a man who is uh, Orthodox. Um, we're doing something together, a project together. And uh, I asked him, um, you know, what literature did he like to read? And I held up a book that uh, I have here in my desk. And I said, have you ever read The Way of the Pilgrim? <laughs> And he looks at me and he takes his hand and he holds up the pe the book. Yes, I am reading it. And I just thought of what the two of us, you know, we're, we're working on something together and the two of us have on our desks the same book. Well, uh, so it was it was quite providential. And I was just there thinking, what are the odds? You know, I don't believe in coincidences. What are the odds that both of us are reading are reading this same book? Um. As many people remember, I, I'm, I, there was a time that I was about to become Orthodox and uh, because of all the confusion, everything that had happened in the Legions of Christ and uh, I was doing a lot of searching, a lot of reading. Um, I didn't in the end, after reading um, Valentin Tomberg's books, um, do encourage you to read them and uh, also encourage you to read the books of Roger Book, The Gentle Traditionalist. But I've, I have a deep appreciation for orthodoxy and their works and especially Hesychism, the Jesus Prayer. Um, so and I, I, we, were, we were just talking you there, um, you know, about what transforms the church. Who transformed the church? Who speak most loudly about the reality, what is true, good and beautiful of our faith, of who Christ is. And it is the saints. It is the saints. And it's really hard to wrap your, your mind around this idea of being a saint, of striving to be a saint, because, you know, many people hold these people up as, uh, you know, some type of so far off, you know, that they're separate to us and, you know, OK, you, you became a saint. But that's that's great. But I can't be like this and I can't I don't have the, the qualities or the abilities or I'm I've my past is terrible and I can't be a saint. But <laughs> the more I meditate on it and I've been meditating on this for so long, the more I meditate it, I can't get away that, from that idea that there is no other way to follow Christ than to be a saint. Now, I'm not talking about the, the title that they give you after you die, because I mean, who, after you die, do you really care about the titles or your legacy, as some people are saying? But it's knowing Christ more. It's knowing him more and more and more. It's, it's going into that mystery more and more and more. And something we were discussing while we were talking is, as... as as Catholics, him as a Christian, as an Orthodox Christian, me as a Catholic, you know, it's important that we are icons. I, in the sense, not this modern term of what an icon is, but in, the icon, the, the, the image, we have to be an image of, of, of Christ, in a sense. We have to point with our lives, with our actions, what we do towards Christ always pointing towards Christ. We have to be an image of what is above. You know, an icon represents what is above. If you go into a beautiful Orthodox church, uh, you will venerate the icons first. You go in, you kiss the icons, there'll be both sides of the church. And then you will pray probably in front of the iconoclastus, the, this beautiful image of, of heaven. It, it is it is. It screams true, good and beautiful. It, if you've ever been into a beautiful Orthodox church that's painted with icons, it's just your, 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 your mind is drawn towards what's true, good and beautiful. This used to be the same way in the Catholic Church until we lost our minds and started destroying our sacred spaces and making them so bland and so empty that um, you go into there and you're wondering what's going on. Um, and I suppose... You know, the Catholic Church will have to deal with that at some stage. We'll have to come through this crisis, this iconic, iconoclastic crisis of the destruction of what's true, good and sacred. We don't even know where to place our Lord in the Eucharist in the church anymore. We don't even know where to place him. We've spent millions 
taking out tabernacles and building new tabernacles more uglier than we can imagine to put our Lord in there. Uh, Because we don't know where to place our Lord in our church anymore. Um, And it's it's, it's important that we return to what's true, good and beautiful. But it's important that we first, us, this has to start with us. We have to be that icon that is pointing to what's above, to pointing to Christ. Because there really isn't any other way. There really isn't any other option. Like what is, if we're not for Christ, who are we for? What are we for? What do we stand for? So uh, I was, there was something in this book that um, I felt I, I needed to say, pray or talk about in this podcast. And it's called The Power of Prayer. So it's, uh, it's, in, the, it's in the Pilgrim, the Pilgrim continues this way. And it talks about the power of prayer. I'm just going to read it out. Prayer is so dynamic and powerful that you can pray and do what you wish. And prayer will bring you to the right and just decision. For a good and holy life, pleasing to God, nothing is more important as love. Love and do whatever you wish, says St. Augustine. Because he who truly loves will not wish to do anything which is displeasing to his beloved. And because prayer is an act of of outpouring love, this can be said of it also. Nothing is as necessary for salvation as regular prayer. Pray and do what you wish, and you will reach the perfection of prayer and holiness and transformation. For through understanding of this, we will illustrate it by examples. Pray and think what you will, for your thoughts will be purified by prayer. Prayer will enlighten your mind, will quiet and disperse your uh, irrelevant thoughts. St. Gregory of Sinai confirms this when he says, if you wish to drive away distracting thoughts and purify your mind, do so by prayer. For nothing else is capable of holding the mind more than prayer. And St. John Climacus says the following. Conquer the enemies of thought through the name of Jesus. For you will not find a better tool than this. Two, pray and do what you will. And your actions will become devout and fruitful and beneficial for your salvation. Frequent prayer, regardless of, of what intention, will not be without fruit because it contains divine power, says Mark the Hermit. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved, Acts 2.21. For example, a person praying without success or devotion received understanding and a call to repentance. A pleasure-seeking girl prayed for a change of heart and prayer showed her the path to virginal life and gave her the strength to listen to the precepts of Jesus Christ. Pray and do not try hard by your own power to overcome your passions. Prayer will destroy them in you. You have in you who is greater than anyone in this world. John 1 John 4 4 and St. John Carpathos teaches that if you do not have the gift of temperance you should not be dejected by belief that God wishes you to apply yourself to prayer and prayer will save you. For example of this is found in the lives of the fathers where we read about an elder who fell into sin He did not give in to despondency, but turned to prayer and regained his his peace. Pray for, pray and do not be apprehensive about anything. Do not be afraid of trouble or misfortune, for prayer will protect you and sustain you under all circumstances. Remember that Peter was drowning because of his lack of faith. Remember Paul praying in prison and the monk who was freed from persistent temptation and the girl who was saved from the ill-intentioned soldier as a result of prayer and many other similar examples, which all confirm the power, efficacy and universality of prayer uttered in the name of Jesus Christ.
next page here. Five. Prayer. Pray always, no matter how poorly, and do not be disturbed by anything. Be happy in spirit and at peace, for prayer will direct your life and give you understanding. Remember what the saints say about the power of prayer. St. John Chrysostom confirms that prayer through coming from us is full of, though coming for us is full of sin, is immediately purified. And Mark the Hermit says, to make an effort to pray is in our power, but to make prayer purely is a gift of grace. And so offer to God what is in your power. Begin by bringing to God a sacrifice of constancy in prayer and God's almighty power will swallow your weaknesses. Your dry and distracted but frequent prayer will become a habit and second nature. Your prayer will be made pure, fervent and powerful. Six. And finally, if you wish. And finally, if you will use all your time in prayer, then naturally you will not have time left either for sinful deeds or even for sinful thoughts. Do you see now what depth there is in that wise saying, love and do what you will. Prayer, pray and do what you wish. How comforting and encouraging this is for the sinner who is weighed down with weakness and is groaning under the loud load of warring passions. Prayer then is the all embracing means for reaching salvation and perfection. Yes, but prayer is coupled with a condition for scripture commands that we pray always, constantly, only frequent and uninterrupted. Consequently, only frequent and uninterrupted prayer is very effective and powerful. And we know that constancy is within our willpower, just as purity, fervor and perfection of prayer are a gift of grace. And so we will pray as often as possible. We will consecrate our whole life to prayer, even if at the beginning it is distracted. Constancy, constancy will teach us attention and quantity will definitely lead to quality. One experienced prayer writer said that we learn to do anything well. It is necessary to do it oft, as often as possible. So this is from the way of the pilgrim and the pilgrim continues his way. Um, so uh, reading that book because it came up in our conversation today, I suppose I, would, I do want to return to that theme. I know it's a very challenging theme to be an icon of what is above. You know, the, the, often you find the word in the in social media icons of this and icons of that. Well, the you know the world uses that word icons as uh, of as an image of what is below. You know, pop stars and God knows what. You know, we need to be icons of what is above, of Christ, of His grace, of His love. You know, that that we are meant for for Him, for His world. We're not meant for this world. But um, I just thought it was an interesting conversation, inspiring conversation I had this evening. Um, and it's amazing what God puts together. You know, there's no consequences in life. Um, but uh, I do encourage people to get this book. It's called The Way of the Pilgrim. And um, I think every Christ, every Catholic should read it. Uh, I certainly found a lot of, of um, comfort in it. And uh, learn the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy me, a sinner. And, 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 and let that be your prayer if you can't pray or if you're struggling to pray. Um, prayer is the greatest proof of God's existence. Prayer is the greatest proof of God's existence. So always prayer. Pray and keep praying. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.